Are you looking dapper? ESP at 1320. Shout out to D-Lo and KC. They're lighting beams up. Hey, Sacramento feeling good. They didn't make any moves. Oh, wait. Is Ja going to join the Kings so he can light that beam up too? <laughs> That's, that's that's a solid four right solid there. Solid four. Honestly, yeah. we should be crushing him more because it's ridiculous what he's doing. Right, what just the whole well, family, the antics, everything like it is ridiculous what they're doing. Well, what I said was, uh, and this is what I firmly believe because we don't know for sure that it was a laser connected to a sure. gun. So put that aside. But there's enough it, stuff. But what happened before that, when they are menacing and intimidating the traveling party of an opposing team, that's a classic. What are you doing? And I got a what are you doing at 945 today. Oh, Hopefully good. we can squeeze it in. Oh, I hope it's not me uh, no, it shushing people. It does. No, that was, yeah, shush gate yesterday. It does involve me. an on-air person at this station. Uh-oh. And it's nobody in this room. Thank God. And it's nobody with whom I do radio five, well, three days a week. Oh. Four days, some weeks, depending. But I'll get Load to that. management, Mark. At 9.45. Watch Party Willard. <laughs> Watch Party Willard. I is he cracked. setting up for the party right now? He is setting up for the party. <laughs> I broke that out the on party. him. Uh, and, you know, I, I told him I'm a Super Bowl <laughs> free agent, but I'm not sure if I'm going to make it back out. I'm doing nine games tomorrow, Butch. Oh. So it'll is be, it playoffs yet? No, uh, we got uh, two or three more weeks okay. of regular season, but I'm on pace to set a record for most games nice. personally in the year. Wow. This will be my time. fifth straight week of doing nine. You're the Cal Ripken Jr. Dude, of- nine. Nine games is a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Nine, yeah. nine games you. is a lot. That's that's so you're starting at eight a.m. Nine o'clock okay. first. Yeah. Boss man, son is playing right. Yeah, I, I don't have him this week. I got oh, all God. girls. Look, thank look, God. Do, do you call troubles on him? I, or, how are you with the whistle when it comes to little Huddy? Uh, I have to crack the fall on two, on two nine two nine here here. Do you give him one of these? He plays physical with an F. So oh, he uh, does. two nine gets his uh, oh, nice. two nine. I think I've ref three of his games and he's averaging I think three point three fouls a game. <laughs> nice. A couple no calls too. It's like. That's the boss's kid. Is the boss watching? Is he sitting there? To- <laughs> I'll say this about the boss. All he does is look, look, look. Doesn't scream. Doesn't bark orders at his kid. He is a model wow. spectator. Nice. And he you knows- know me. I'm not big on compliments to anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, he's the kind of parent you dream about as a ref. Wow. And he knows He knows you will turn and you'll tee him up. You'll toss him. Well, I've actually had to admonish him pregame just mm-hmm. out of fun. All right, Nahigan, that's enough. Because we do a pregame so prayer. So you know what I like to so, do? A pregame When the prayer. referees know me very well, <laughs> in the game beforehand, <laughs> there'll be a stoppage of time at some point in the third or fourth quarter. And, and your boy goes over, and I pay homage to the officials that I know very well. They come over. We share love. It's my way of signaling to the entire gymnasium. We go way back. Yeah. And for me, it's like maybe every other game, somebody like, ah, oh, man, love the show. Yes. And it's like, you love the show? It's a guaranteed one or two calls going your way. Do you have a meter? That's three calls. <laughs> <laughs> So tonight, 530, okay. we got a playoff game tonight, St. St. Cecilia's. Sixth grade, right? Sixth Division grade, one, Brandon, I heard St. this earlier. Yeah, it's going to be a big one. And uh, or Perpetua's I, in the other bracket, right? What's that? Isn't Perpetua? Or no, no, it's uh, St. Stephen's versus Epiphany. Epiphany, Epiphany. yeah. Epiphany. Perpetua's Jazz the Wiseman playing in any of these games? Oh, Seriously, well, that's a transition right I there. Jeez, Louise, let me tell you. I'm a public know. school kid. This is all Look, long. I, I'll I'll do do it. I, I will not say that we are good in the Western Conference of this bracket. We've got to play the games first. You think John feel like... They're still good in the West. Who? I, I bet ja? you there's people who would love to be the seventh seed and play the Memphis Grizzlies. It's funny you guys round. all say that, and everybody's ready to rat a tat tat Memphis. And I think that Memphis does want I the agree. Warriors. And you guys said earlier, like, they don't want that smoke. They do want that smoke. Now, whether or not they should right. want the smoke <laughs> yes. is different. Right. Yeah. But Ja, ja and company. <laughs> They're the kind of team that I don't think that they think about what's our best path to navigate <laughs> to make it all the way. Who I do think, we hate the most? Exactly. Let's play them first. I right. think they look at the Warriors like, hell yeah, we want the Warriors, even though I think the Warriors match up best with Memphis mm-hmm. because something about basketball IQ, Memphis is faster, younger, more athletic, yet the Warriors will win that in five for obvious reasons. <laughs> you know, And I, I look at Memphis and the way they play at most times because I'm a big league pass guy now. Shout out, Bonte. I do need to get that why password. because No, I'm a big this? league pass guy. Why, why you got to do and this? And normally this? this is when I pull a random NBA <laughs> player out of my pocket and throw him out there, and Bonte's like, league pass. I love him. I mean, just watching Jalen Brunson on a nightly basis really makes oh, yeah. me appreciate Nick no I haven't watched a lot of Nick's basketball. I'll be honest with you there. Jalen Brunson they is playing well. They have face recognition system uh, in there. As you walk through Madison yeah. Square Garden, James Dolan has uh, illegal right. face recognition 
uh, software of some sort. Allegedly. Allegedly. Right. And he claims he will ban, he will take out all the alcohol because they're going to take away his alcohol permit for Madison Square Garden if he doesn't get rid of the technology. And he's like, fine, we just want to sell alcohol. Yeah. That'll go great. Hilarious. <laughs> it's insane. Have you been to MSG? No. Have, have yes. you been there? Oh, yeah. I, I went there like 15 years ago because my ex-wife was a huge oh. Reggie Miller fan. Oh, cool. So I said, hey, we'll go to New York. It yeah. was a trip. And we'll go when the Pacers are there. We were up in like the 500 level because there's yeah, like seven or eight high. levels. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Great seats, though, and good sight lines. And uh, it's cool because you walk out of the subway mm -hmm. and you're Penn basically Station. Penn Station. Thank you, Bonte. And you walk right out and boom, you are in wow. Madison Square Garden. It right. is pretty, pretty special. Nice. When I was in New York, Madison Square Garden was undergoing like, uh, what's Thank the you. like re, 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 um, Re like a renovation. renovation. Thank you. It's a renovation sensation. It Kyle. Sure you was. can say it. Yeah. No. So there, there were undergoing renov renovations. You couldn't get Mount in. Dolan was being built. You could not. <laughs> you could not get into the building. They were like, "Yeah, hey, here's MSG. Feel free to walk around. Literally walk <laughs> around. around. Oh. You don't get to walk like through and get to see the car. No, 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 none of that. So yeah. it looks like Market Street then. You know, yes. everything's boarded up, and you walk around. Yeah, the seriously. Now. Just a lot more New York Rangers on the walls yeah. right. down yeah. at MSG. What's the one pro venue that you haven't been to that you want to go to the most of all? Lambo. Yeah, Lambo. Lambo's, yeah, Lambo's, Lambo's up there. Yeah. And then uh, I've been to Fenway, and I thought that was just... See, Fenway is the one for me. Fenway's still. it for me. Been so to when Fenway. you go to Fenway, what's crazy is like you feel like you're in an actual cathedral. You know, people, oh, the cathedral. No, no. Right. You literally feel the ghosts. I'll, I'll grant these Bostonians that there's something very special special and magical about about family. and the seats are so narrow totally so, so freaking narrow it's not fun bonte not double fun. x bonte not yeah no that. it was not <laughs> a good experience cool. I, but I got to see a red sox games against the yankees and jeter's oh, last wow. year wow. it was awesome That's okay cool. it was actually yoannis cespedes's first game oh, as a red sox oh, wow nice. yeah. strong see, I crazy. Saw Dice bold stuff. against matt kane on a saturday and then friday night was zito versus somebody <laughs> and then wakefield on sunday oh the knuckleball and he hit a, bonds hit a home run off of him that's so great yeah it was pretty Cool. So PNC Park, because I'm looking at yeah, all the baseball PNC's teams. Cool. PNC, I want to go to. I have a few friends who have been to all the parks, and what? to a person, they're like, PNC is the best park. Really? They walk yes. around the yep. park? Yeah. No, they've gone through it. They've gone in it. Totally. Yeah. PNC and Kauffman Stadium in Kansas City. I always love the water really? fountain. The waterfall, yeah. Mm -hmm. The waterfall. Exactly. And Kauffman looks dope, man. Kauffman's cool. No, I hadn't thought of them. Yeah, so that's Kansas. two. I've been to Camden, been to. Yeah, I've been to Camden. I went to old, not old, old Yankee Stadium, but Yankee Stadium Pot Deux. Oh, yeah. uh, I was actually there Palm Sunday. Shout out oh, nice. Catholicism wow. again. And uh, the day Phil Mickelson won the Masters, oh, that's his cool. first Masters. Wow. So nice. that's kind of a fun, like, yeah. exactly, the big leap, yeah, the yeah, Mickelsonian dude. leap. So I, I the went worst to, stadium probably is Chicago White Sox Stadium. Gary T. Ray Comiskey, uh, a.k.a. Comiskey, Cellular, oh, whatever it's, it's called now. It's so sterile. It doesn't even feel like you're in Chicago. Yeah. I have not been to uh, old new Comiskey or whatever they call how's, it now. How's uh, Detroit going to treat James Wiseman? What's what's the name of their Standing stadium? Standing ovation. Now? Little Isn't Caesars Little Arena. Caesars Arena? Yeah. Little Caesars I knew it was Arena. Pizza. That was Pizza Pizza. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. America I, Park, Four Field, Little Caesars Arena. I'm really happy for James Wiseman. Me too. And me it's too. taken me almost 24 hours because the news broke on our show, mm -hmm. 11 o'clock, and uh, man, the YouTube went bananas because you guys always have strong numbers in the morning. Mm -hmm. Usually dips about ten to fifteen percent when we come on, you People know. Or at work. And no hard feelings. I don't take it personally. But by I the do. time the trade the trade got announced and we went up and the then the talk started day. happening. Yeah. And Dude, my Sadiq, I heard that call, my by Sadiq the way. Bay take, I think, was the best take on the show What's yesterday. That? Well, they get Sadiq Bay. And I immediately am praising him for his ability to to play in the system. <laughs> you were going to say, later, hey, Bay, Bay, huh? Seconds later, <laughs> hey, the Bay, word Bay. comes in that Bay is gone, and I yeah. pivoted so fast. I oh, never thought saying. he would fit here. <laughs> <laughs> it was an unbelievable pivot. It was, really uh, it was a good hour where it's like five draft picks for James, and then like people were just losing their minds and being angry. I was telling him I felt tremendous empathy, obviously, for James Wiseman. But we just do this thing in sports. Team announces transaction. And underneath the comments, Twitter and Instagram, it's just not everyone. It's a small percentage, and it's a lot of anonymous. The level of pure hatred for a 21-year-old, it's like, dude, like, okay, it didn't work out. Like, right. do we really have to flood this guy with just some of the worst comments I've ever seen? Whether it's Jordan Poole, Trey Lance, we've done this a lot with these young athletes, and it's like, man, can we just... 
temper our social media right. reactions a little. I mean, maybe I'm too in the weeds on it, but it really it, it look at you for talking him. for people to temper their reactions. You've come I a long way, Joe. Come in the a long way. Yes. <laughs> Captain all all caps. Well, now he's to temper their reactions. Now, I mean, he's getting soft on me. Uh, asking Forrest anybody Butcher. to temper their reactions on social media is ridiculous. Like, it, just not. Just, that's not. That's what social media is for. Right. I think that I think the issue with James Wiseman is he was this avatar for like the post Steph era, mm-hmm. and it was seen as with with Steph kind of playing as well as he did, mm-hmm. uh, especially last season. It was like, well, he's not needed. He's holding back this last yeah. gasp of the Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, Draymond Green era, and I think he was just a symbol for ownership, like trying to trying to move on from this golden age of Warriors basketball. And I think that's where a lot of the vitriol comes well, from. Well, and I also think there's an unrealistic expectation that this thing's just going to go on forever. And I've heard right. Steiny kind of talk right. about this, and it's like, oh. well, hey, that's not how life works, nor is that how sports works. And Bob it Myers did. told Mark and I when we did our show from uh, Chase Center to start the year, yeah. just enjoy this year, and yeah. it seemed to be more prescient than ever yeah. in terms you know of what? after this year... Who knows who's coming back? Exactly. Draymond may opt out. You know what? Joe may, I mean, Bob may decide to not re-sign. And this really may be the last hurrah, Bonte. couple things. Talk to me, One, Bonte. Clay Thompson, he said the best thing ever. Talk if to you him, lurk, talk back. If you lurk, you will get hurt on social media. So don't lurk. Don't look at the comments. I stopped doing that, and I've been happily ever that after. That is such Living a happy lie. Ever. I don't look at the comments. It's, I don't. He's knee-deep in Philadelphia no. blogs, reading all the blogs. No, 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 Number two, no, no, no. the Warriors have been saying this since like 2018. This could be our last year together. We don't know what the future holds. I've been here the same like the Rolling rhetoric Stones. for five this years. Is our it comes final, to the Warriors. This is the last Elton right. John concert. Right. Like, I'll study, say this about study, James like Wiseman. It's never going to be his last since 2018. One this is a legacy game. <laughs> last, year was, last year was found money because yep. la- you, last Gibbs. year was the one where mm-hmm. you weren't supposed to win the chip, which is great. And I, I loved what you guys were saying earlier about looking back because – they can not make the playoffs ever again with Steph, Clay, and Dre. They could be the 10 seed this year and be a play-in bow-out and the same thing next year and the next three years. Maybe they never play another playoff game. We don't look back on this era as anything other than an unmitigated yep. smash grand slam success. Unprecedented. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Not only because where we all have been as Warrior fans, yeah. and some of us have been around longer yeah. than others, and you know some of us... Barely remember the Rick Barry chip. I think I was seven years old, yeah. not aware enough to really understand what was my going dad said on. It was tape delayed. But I remember being a kid in Marin in the early '80s. I would go with my brother Mike, Mikey 1.0, mm. and you know I may or may not have been in a big down jacket smuggling Bacardi. <laughs> That's in, the old into the way. arena, and I was 12 years old, and I looked like I was six. And so no one's ever going to frisk your boy. No doubt. <laughs> and, but I went to a bunch of Warrior games. Yeah. You would show up to the Collie, yeah. five bucks for parking, scalp a ticket for usually about five or seven bucks. You'd go to Warrior games. So what? I was raised on this team, but, you know, Rod Higgins, can you hit a free throw? And Joe Barry Carroll, they were terrible. Thank terrible. you. Well, Chris Washburn. So when I, when All I see that, people Bonte. say he's the worst draft pick in Warrior history, I'm like, okay. Yeah. Guys. Do you know how many bad draft picks the Warriors had for like a 27 straight year period? Mm-hmm. Like He's this. already better than Patrick O'Brien. Th- He's already, already better Fuller. than Ike Diago. Thank you. Todd Fuller. Mikhail Petras. Andrew DeClark. We can debate Anthony Me. Randolph. Mikhail Petras had a nice little okay, career. Okay, Yuri Welsh. <laughs> How I mean, about, how about how about uh, what's Bellinelli in a Warrior uniform? He's so Marco here's, Bellinelli. Okay, okay, let, I, <laughs> Spadoni's I get, offended I get, back there. I get what you're saying. But on Joe the other Smith hand, was number on the, one overall. No doubt, no doubt. One. Joe Smith had a long career, though. Yeah, he no, the year. No, understood. No, Rookie understood. The year, and I he think, just never. I think, but it's it's it went from this guy is a combination of Tim Duncan and David Robinson, well, and he's Kevin Garnett, and he's this and that, and it was like great. And then he was just eh. but see, year, and it was I, fine, and he gets hurt, and he misses the whole second season, and in that in the meantime, the Warriors were too good to play him. And let him learn. And We're do, celebrating this is, LeBron James right now, right? And mm-hmm. Rightfully. He took a couple of years. One of the greatest players who's ever played came straight from high school. And even then, it took time to develop and nurture. And how many wasted yeah. you know, games of basketball did they play the first couple of years as he found himself? Like, Tim Duncan was a four-year player so, at Wake Forest. So, right. so James, we- James Wiseman played 39 games his rookie season. Mm-hmm. In those 39 games, his numbers were on par, or if not better, than Rasheed Wallace through that stretch. Kevin mm-hmm. Garnett through that stretch, and, played two or three and, and Jermaine O'Neal, who Carolina. didn't even play at all his yeah. first four years, and mm-hmm. it was on par with Dwight Howard. 
similar because they all came out either after high school or two years in college. So his rookie season, he was training up. People forget that he was ascending, starting right. to figure it out slowly hurt. but surely, and then he got hurt with the meniscus injury. Yeah. Bums to me is Anthony Davis, where you can't even average eight points a game. Right, Michael Oliva Candy Anthony couldn't play Bennett, on the court. Out of the league right. in it, a year. So quick. Adrian O'Neal is a great camp, comp, and it took him 210 games wow. in Portland to before yeah. he went to Indiana. Yeah. The thing that I'm fascinating by in this whole saga, and we'll get to the GP2 yeah. end of it, because yeah. the Warriors did get better yesterday, but now we get to see, is James Wiseman a bust? Did the Warriors give up on him too early? Right. You know, did one they of those get two enough th- for him? Well, I don't think that they could have gotten anything more. And yeah. Whether or I'm not whether or not Steve Kerr has misused the young players or not, I, I disagree with that notion because the veterans aren't going to tolerate having these guys learn on the right. court. So that's just the nature Even of where we they are. Learned on the court, but they were during, not in the championship window. I, I right. get that. And that's, and that's that's that to it. me but is that's, the total. That's, that's, that's a totally too, different thing. Because a lot of people will blame the kids for some of the losses early in the season. Well, I see the veterans on the floor. Absolutely, last it's the veterans. Yes. These games. Yep. This is one thing that I totally believe that Steiny says, especially when it comes to Jordan Poole. Like when Steph's out, you can't expect Jordan Poole to carry it. It's up to Draymond, Agreed. Clay, and Wiggins. You're the veterans. You, you stem the tide. It's but, a, yeah, whatever you get from Jordan Poole. Well, you have to crush JP because he makes plays that make you want to slam your head yeah, but we into the steering wheel. We don't crush Wiggins for his three consecutive turnovers on dribble drives. The other, for example, the other night, wow. like, I don't know if you listen to, to my K Wig bit, but I've been I'm not crushing yeah. Wiggins. But right. the thing that I come down Wiggins wrote about is uh. the disappearing act. Yeah, yep. he's a spaceman. That's Two what I call for him. six with yeah. no rebounds. Dude, think about it. Before he got hurt with the right adductor strain and had the non COVID illness, he was shooting forty five percent from three and fifty percent from the floor. Yeah. And now his free throw percentage is at 52%. He's not shooting more than like 23% for three. Mm-hmm. And his field goal percentage is dipped into the 30s. Yeah. He's got to wake up. There's no doubt. Absolutely. But also, if we could give Clay Heat, who's won four championships, mm-hmm. has come back from two gruesome leg injuries, then Jordan Poole can get heat too. Yeah. Everybody can get heat no on doubt. this team. Jordan Poole gets heat, but I don't think that, for me anyway, when Steph's out, I don't look at Jordan Poole and say, all right, Jordan, you be Steph yeah, or else we can't win. Yeah, that's to me, the, the mantle of responsibility still falls on the veterans first. But... Steve Kerr, obviously, with his veterans, they came to a, a point this year early on where the vets and he sat down and they all agreed that you can't play these guys. You just can't play these guys and expect to win. Steve Kerr famously talked about chasing wins. We're not chasing wins. Well, yeah, you are. Because if you weren't chasing wins, <laughs> Kaminga, Moody, and Wiseman yeah. all would have been playing right. a lot more early on. So mm-hmm. it's okay. You're chasing wins. I don't blame you for chasing wins. Because in three years or however soon, when you don't have this core anymore, then you're not going to be chasing But that's a miscalculation organizationally for them to not understand their own roster dynamics enough. Now, you could say, Joe, in the position they're in in 2020 is dramatically different than 2022. And I'll listen to that argument. But my thing would be to them... Well, you put yourself in a position to set yourself up for this misery because they won't tolerate playing with young players, and you tried to thread the needle. And if you don't understand your own locker room dynamics, right. then you kind of brought this on yourself. Do you get Do you get where I'm trying? I to- do, but at, and it's tough because you're picking number two overall. I know, and Edwards goes one, and you're sitting there at two, and you got Lamelo Ball sitting there or James Wiseman, and you're thinking Lamelo Ball kind of repeats what we already have, uh-huh. and we got to deal with his dad. Yep. I didn't want him to draft James Wiseman. I've never been a believer yeah, in James you, Wiseman. You were on that. I was. You were on that. And I, I, I pretend that I wanted Halliburton, but I thought Halliburton was a Texas oil company. It is. <laughs> I wanted Obi Toppin, and uh, I'm, I have right. to, I have uh, to readily admit foot, that. Yeah. Two foot Boy, jumper. could he jump? Hey, look, oh my there, God! There's one legit Obi player. Is a bad Thank you. Yes. Time. Uh, Anthony Obi Edwards. Topin. I'm sure that Warriors would have loved for Anthony Edwards to slip down to sure. the two spot. He didn't. So Lamelo Ball. To your point. Lolo, LaMelo Ball going to be happy coming off the bench? I mean, would LeVar Ball be happy with exactly. LaMelo Ball coming off the bench? Exactly. I think the off-the-court stuff and him playing winning basketball, what happens with Jordan Poole if you have LaMelo Exactly. Right. So now you've got four guards, you know, and Clay isn't much of a passer. Jordan right. Poole is getting better as a passer. Steph is great. you got Draymond, and how is Ball going to fit right. with this team? So I think in that spot, they were in a difficult situation. Now, Kaminga, you drafted another project. You drafted Wiseman, who's a project, Kaminga, who's a project, and you thought Moses Moody 
was more rotation mm-hmm. ready than you he's turned he was, out to be. You thought he would be able to offset the loss of Gary Payton Jr., not all the way, but give you some of that perimeter defense, and yeah. it's nowhere near. See, to me, GP2, as much as we can say it's about Wiseman, it's a lot about Moody, too, yeah. and Kaminga, because I think they thought all three of those guys you know would what? be farther along. Kaminga yeah. has come along No, here, I agree. And he shows Absolutely. that he can play that GP2 cyst, being a dunker, hit the open three like GP2 but did last season. But not as far along as we would all like. Would you agree? Well, he didn't play a lot last year. He's 20 years old. I right. don't so we want more, you know? Of course, of course, I'm, but you also want to win. Yes. I, I want to go back to the James Wiseman thing, and you saying they miscalculated their personnel or their locker room culture. The temperature I think that's in the wrong. locker room. I think that's wrong. Because Why? in, in 2019-2020, that was the year Steph played five yeah. games and yeah. they were abysmal. Yeah. Draymond didn't play a lot, and yeah. when he did, he looked ineffective. Steph, yeah. before he went down, but was not playing. they gave him an extension before that season even started. Sure. And they knew that Dre was going to be a part of this team for four straight years. Sure. Yeah, him, but he and mailed they, it but in, they, and it wasn't a good look. Right, and no, they I know looked, what I'm saying. Like they looked, knew they were sunk looked, in with that roster. Let's be real. It looked over. It looked like, okay, this this group, and Clay tears his, uh, was it the Achilles? Achilles. Achilles a second yep. yeah. right before like right it, before on the draft, draft, day. draft day on right. draft Kelly day Uber right to so, try to salvage the situation right. like if it was over if they would have waved the white flag you're not making the Kelly Oubre trade at all right. and I know that sounds absurd to say out loud they were thinking that they could salvage and they tried their ass off but to get they, into the playoffs no but they thought right they weren't gonna punt and tank yeah but they were looking at Draymond Green Steph Curry and Clay Thompson and going all right these guys days of being effective on a championship team are probably behind us, we're going to be in a spot where James Wiseman is going to be able to play a lot because this team's not going to be mm-hmm, great. Mm-hmm. This team's not going to be contending for titles. Well, then they come back and they start contending again. Right. And But look, once you've look given Clay at. a four-year deal where he doesn't play for two straight years, and once you give Draymond a four-year deal extension, you know the nucleus of this team is right. over the luxury tax. You know yeah. that financially. But, but I think you're missing this point. They didn't believe that they could play at a high level again. Right. That's why they were like, Pinning their hopes on James Wiseman you and the whole the locker room dynamic. When you have the exactly. money invested that they had invested, four players, okay? Wiggins, it was D'Lo before, but Wiggins, Draymond, Clay, and Steph. Automatically, you're in the tax bracket. You're paying through the roof on every other acquisition. Right. right there is your line of demarcation. If you're going from a financial standpoint of where are we in? Are we all in on the nostalgia and trying to win now? Mm-hmm. Or are we all in on the future? When you make that financial commitment, if you are hovering around the luxury tax, I would agree with you. Once you're over it with four, just four players, to me, you're all in. That's the way I view right. it. And they were all in, and they had the number two pick. Exactly. And to your point about James early in his career, he was starting to show some progress, mm-hmm. and he got hurt. If Wiseman never got hurt, then maybe the next year, the championship year, Who he knows? actually is a, he's a rotational yeah. player, and maybe yeah. he shows the improvement that we've seen now from Kaminga. But, but to Kyle's just point, stunk. though... Look, that's another point. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe, just stunk. But, yeah. but to Kyle's point, look, I get all the max contract stuff and the luxury tax, but you could still have these guys locked in and still be thinking... Boy, their better days are behind them. I don't know if we could get back to a championship with just the nucleus of Clay, Steph, and Draymond. So now we got this young thoroughbred of James Wiseman. Let him play. That got derailed, obviously, with the injury. Right. You, you skipped the beat. Now, as far as the locker room dynamic about wanting James Wiseman, Lakers getting all the heat for the James Wiseman stuff. Everybody's saying mm-hmm. this is James. The whole damn organization wanted James Wiseman, including mm. players, wanted James Wiseman with the number two overall pick. Yeah, didn't Draymond call him from... Japan he was China? a part of the draft process. Trey Mont always. Bob Myers. Steph Curry. Wiseman went to Steph Curry camps. They were all on board with James Wiseman. So there's this, this uh, misnomer that, oh, Joe Lacob is all on him. He, this right. is a pet project. Yeah, Joe Lacob, Joe Lacob, Joe Lacob. The whole damn organization wanted James Wiseman. Well, and it failed. Yeah, it's a bad pick. There is the sense of him being light years ahead of the league. And the two timelines thing was nothing that they created, but you could look at what right. they've been trying to do. And it feels like. A two timelines thing. And the fact that they moved off Wiseman yesterday to me is a dramatic, mm-hmm. dramatic move because whether it was Lacob or one of the various Lacobs or Myers or everybody who was in on Wiseman, now they're all out on Wiseman, which tells me all I need to know about how they thought he was going to develop. Now, mm-hmm. can James Wiseman. I also think it, it, it speaks to the West in general. I don't. I Let's say Kyrie doesn't get dealt. Let's say KD doesn't get dealt. I'm not sure. I'm I'm just throwing this out. I think that because of all the movement in the West, I do think that that ramps up the need to to acquire something to be able to offset defensively. With some I think of these they trade teams. him anyway. You think he was gone no matter what? Gone, and I'll get into it uh, here I at nine thirty with Kyle. Season, I, think. I think you're right. Dibs. We're going to look at another misnomer, which is you need to be an elite defensive team 
to win the NBA championship. I ran down the last 10 champions based on where they are on points per game allowed, and you don't necessarily have to be elite. Now, you can't be terrible. Right. Because the Warriors are 26. And you can't Thank be a you. fouling team. You can't Thank be terrible. You. So can the Warriors, right now they're 26th in the league, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, in the association, <laughs> in points per game like allowed. Can How can they get from 26? Can they get from 26? Every yeah. single time. I, you have to. Yeah, but, but, yeah. but Dips, here's the thing. Joe, can I, I, start, you get I steal from, that from the TV. Can talks, you so. get from 26th to 15th in points allowed? But here's what I would say. This version of the Warriors, and because this guy doesn't play this night, and back-to-backs, this guy's not going to play, it's so hard for me to extrapolate regular season data and say this is what they're going to do come playoff time like i think they're uniquely the data doesn't fit for them because of how they play in the postseason is so different with the roster construction from the regular season but last year sense. last year they did the same thing exactly they barely played and they were 15th in wow. the association but they were also off to a much better two-month start yeah but you were. know what though yeah. the but game is about getting buckets it's what you're getting to That's they have the number one number two offense in the league correct number one in three-point makes number one in three-point attempts top five in three-point percentage offensively they could score on anybody but is there and all you have to do all you have to do all you have to do is play defense in spurts and i'm sorry defense in four minutes i misread my own notes last year they were third in defense uh in points per game allowed but they did it the same way they did this year. Almost the same personnel. Draymond sat. Clay was out for 50 games. Yeah. Steph sat. Yet you were third in defense. So can you take this team, 26 currently in the association, can you get up to the middle of the pack by the end of the year? Because I do believe with GP2, you could be good enough defensively and you're as good offensively. Is you're better anybody? today offensively than you were Clay's yesterday. Better than I he, yes, I agree with that. Clay's better version of himself today than he was last Jordan's year. Jordan's a better version he, of himself. Here's the thing, though. Their sloppiness, like I know all the data of the full game stuff, yeah. is the same thing. Their sloppiness in the final five minutes, I don't know what the data it's is. It's unbelievable. My eyeballs tell me they cannot execute with five minutes to go on both ends consistently enough. Maybe that changes. That's my biggest problem. I think problem that changes. Well, five minutes to go. They've proved in the playoffs. And I can't believe I'm going to do this, but I'm right? going to borrow from Gene in Oakland, Uncle Gene, wow. who said <laughs> seven games they've lost by two points or fewer or overtime. If they win right. just half of those, yeah. then they're the three seed. The Detroit game this is the Gene King. in Oakland. It was... <laughs> They beat, Two for they, my Gene and Oakland. they beat Portland yeah. if Gary Payton the second is playing for the Warriors the other night. Okay, because Dame's not shooting. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't even know. Like, like Wiggins dribbled off his foot twice, and yeah. then Poole dribbled but, into no so, man's land, and then they these, passed up layups. A lot of these like, games, at least four games, just in the last three weeks, Steph Curry has been awful in crunch time. Agree. Yeah. Agree. You, you bet on him being awful in crunch time no. in the playoffs. No, but but no. he has been. Show guardist. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Steph Curry. I'm going to ride with the MVP in the playoffs in the yeah. last five minutes Who's of the game. Who's going to sit here and criticize right. Steph Joe, Curry? are you saying that they should have traded Steph? I mean, uh, <laughs> just let's cut that. Hey, let's cut damn, that. Joe. Damn, Joe. Hey, limping into the weekend. Hey, good damn. luck tonight. I'm kidding. Hey, good luck he tonight. He didn't say that, obviously. Bring damn. home a W. Nah, let's you know, just yeah. say he said that. The, the, okay. the only issue with tonight's game is that for the loser, you're going to have to hear about it forever. And you oh, already lost a big game a month ago. I did lose a big game to them. So you're hearing about that, and if you lose yeah, another this one. Playoffs. This is different. This yeah. is this is a lot know. of warrior talk today. Uh, Trista Crick at eleven o'clock, oh, friend of the wow. program. You know, that's that's Shasky's best friend. That's my girl. Shasky's best friend. She's gonna join us. We'll talk a little Hi, Super Bowl. It's me, Chris. Guys, Chris. No, I'm not gonna do that. Do why, why you gotta do this? A mean man. spirit is one. Wow. You know what, dude? You know what? I'm you know sorry. What? I apologize. You know what, Joe? I apologize. Man. I was trying to do the voice. Hey, you know, Turn your mic on, man. To the voice. <laughs> Tough end of the week for Shasky. Dude, that'd be right. unbelievable. San Fran Shasky. Not. Making, I'm excuse, so making excuses for the Phoenix Suns last year. Like, what the hell has happened to this guy? Philadelphia took a lot out of you. People are saying Philadelphia taking a lot out of Stein and Guru. Why do we say? Boy, yeah. Hey, Mark, Lucky California. That's what the next segment and the next show is sponsored by Dibs. Matson. Don't want to go anywhere. Trista Creek, 11 o'clock.